bit. Hi, Olivia. Hi. Uh, and you're going to be starting with some rather important news for f movie fans because the Cannes Film Festival has just announced its lineup for this year. That is correct, Nadia. The official selection, which includes uh, the films in competition competing for the big prize, the Palme d'Or, has just been announced. We have 18 films so far, and they might add one or two more because some filmmakers are still finishing up their films, still editing just before the deadline. Among those announced today, we have some big names, some regulars at Cannes, including four filmmakers who've already won that prize I mentioned, the Palme d'Or. That includes Hirokazu Koreeda, the third gentleman you can see there, who won for Shoplifters in 2018. Ruben Usland, who won for The Square in 2017. He's number two. Uh, Romanian director Christian Munju, who won in 2007, the first man in a tuxedo. And Belgian brothers Luc and Jean-Pierre Dardenne, who actually have had that prize twice in 1999 and 2005. Now, one thing that's noticeable about the list uh, we've seen this morning is that there aren't that many female filmmakers. Only three this year. You can see them there. That's Valeria Bruni Tedeschi, Claire Denis, and Kelly Reichardt, the uh, American filmmaker, the uh, director of the Cannes Film Festival, said they had made great efforts in uh, recent years to increase uh, gender equality in the selections, and that there are plenty of women in the other sidebar selections. Now, in terms of Hollywood uh, heavyweights, we have James Gray. He's a, a favourite at Cannes. He's showing a film called Armageddon Time, starring Anthony Hopkins, Jeremy Strong, and Anne Hathaway, and Canadian director uh, David Cronenberg. He returns to the festival. He's already had five films in competition over the course of his career. This time, it's a film called Crimes of the Future with a very starry cast, which I'll let you discover in this clip. It is time to start speaking. It is time to listen. It is time to start seeing. It is time to start speaking. It is time to listen. And Olivia, beyond the creme de la creme of contemporary cinema, Cannes is also obviously known for the glitz and glamour of the red carpet. Who can we expect there this year? Well, there is one celebrity element that remains very much to be confirmed, and that's the jury president. Normally, we would know the name of that person uh, at this time. Uh, remains to be seen. And also the jury members, the uh, artistic personalities who join that uh, jury president on the red carpet every evening. Normally a very international, eclectic selection of artists. However, one man uh, a lot of people will be excited to see is Tom Cruise. He'll be there for the film Top Gun Maverick, directed by Joseph Kosinski. That's a special screening out of competition for this sequel to the 1986 film. Of course, I don't need to clarify that Tom Cruise is playing Maverick, of course. He'll be joined by Jennifer Connelly, Miles Teller, John Hamm and Val Kilmer, who you just saw there. He also takes on his previous role of the Iceman. Another special screening, which are often a bit more fun, is the epic biopic of Elvis, and that's directed by Baz Luhrmann, who showed Strictly Ballroom uh, at Cannes in 1992, and that film really kicked off his career. Uh, so that one, Elvis promises to be a very hot ticket at the festival. Let's get a preview. I just gotta be making the most of this thing while I can. This could all be over in a flash. We are the same, you and I. We are two odd, lonely children reaching for eternity. The greatest show on earth. And Olivia, like many cultural events this year, the film festivals have been responding to the war in Ukraine, whether that's with a boycott of Russian features, extra support for Ukrainian artists by some. Um, what's the take been from Cannes? 
Well, there are two Ukrainian films uh, screening uh, that we know about so far. One translates as Vision of a Butterfly by Maxim Nakonechny. That's showing in the Uncertain Regard sidebar section, which is often young filmmakers or first features. The story there centers on a woman returning from Donbass. And the Cannes director, Thierry Fremont, said that when he saw this, it really had a sense of urgency and realism that struck him. Uh, He said that it could have been made in the last uh, couple of months, for example, given the, the situation in Ukraine. There's also Cannes veteran Sergei Luznitsa, who will have a special screening of his latest film, The Natural History of Destruction. Now, Luznitsa has had three films in competition before. His film Donbass in 2018 was really well received there. And as for the Russians, uh, dissident filmmaker Kirill Serebrennikov returns in competition this year with the film Tchaikovsky's Wife. Now, Serebrennikov, as you can see there, is usually notable by his absence because uh, the authorities, the Russian authorities, had banned him from leaving the country in recent years. An empty chair was put out for him at the festival when they screened Petrov's Flu, his film, last year, and in 2018 when his film Lieto was shown. Now, Serebrennikov is currently living in exile in Berlin, so there is a very good chance that he'll be in Cannes this year and that would be quite a politically significant appearance. Whatever happens on the red carpet and inside those screening rooms, we'll be bringing you daily updates from the festival from May 17th when it kicks off. So do stay tuned to France 24 for that. Absolutely. Olivia Salazar-Winspear, thanks very much.